anger, divide and conquer, and the pandemic of stupidity. The Buddha is quoted as saying, Holding on to anger is like drinking the poison and expecting the other person to die. This is the situation of many in the face of the ongoing transgressions, misbehavior, of Donald Trump and the Republican Party. The stupidity and the cheap and mediocre tactics of the Democratic Party establishment, of unfair neoliberalism in service to abusive capitalism, and these days of the governors of some states and the police departments of some cities. Anger. Well deserved, well warranted, but also serving a devilish, diabolical agenda. You don't think they knew that their actions would provoke anger? So now consider. What happens when you get angry about something you can do nothing about? It's the do-nothing-about part that really gets you, isn't it? It's about the uncontrollable other. Eats you up inside? Makes you more adamant? More self-protective? More irritable? Less able to cooperate smoothly? Less intelligent? Divide and conquer. Some people have recognized the divide-and-conquer strategy of the neoconservatives and neoliberals, but they have misunderstood it. They think it's about pitting people or groups or social movements against each other. That's a weak form of divide-and-conquer. The strong version is pitting people against themselves. Let me frame the situation a new way. The Pandemic of Stupidity There is a pandemic of a virus. Not the coronavirus, but of another virus. A kind of virus that infests people's intelligence. This virus is contagious. This virus contaminates all thinking, feeling, and action. It impairs people's judgment. It makes people more emotionally reactive. It makes people more likely to act ineffectively, even foolishly, regrettably, even stupidly, in areas of life entirely other than politics. It adds to people's stress level, affecting all areas of life. It makes us more likely to lose it and less likely to make connections. It's a contributor to the pandemic of stupidity we are reading about and seeing in the news. Trump, the political parties both here in the USA and elsewhere in the world, global corporations operating within a system of abusive capitalism, and everyone affected by the stupidities of these groups are contagious carriers. That's a strong form of divide and conquer. Very clever, now seen. What to do, what to do. I'm definitely not saying to let them get away with it. I'm not saying to suppress, deny, squelch, or control the anger. It can't be dealt with that way. It has to be done in a way that frees your intelligence, that does not use up more of it by attempting to oppose what is really justified anger. It has to be done in a way that actually heightens your intelligence, your freedom, your energy. It has to be done in a way that results in your being wiser, more savvy. Savvy, as a noun, shrewdness and practical knowledge, the ability to make good judgments. Example sentence, the political parties lacked the necessary political savvy. 
savvy as an adjective, shrewd and knowledgeable, having common sense and good judgment. How can that be done? It has to be done through release. On release. People commonly confuse release with catharsis, acting out. That's not release. It's mere fulfillment of the pattern. It doesn't change the pattern. It doesn't even lead to lasting relief or improve our way of operating. Release is dissolution. To dissolve is to go into solution, to lose solidity, to be dispersed. When anger and stupid impulses dissolve, they leave clarity in a more resourceful state. Release clears your mind. It makes room for intelligence. How to release. How do you do that with an emotion, especially a justified emotion? That seems like forgiving an unforgivable act, doesn't it? It isn't. It's about reclaiming your faculties so that you can handle the unforgivable act in a way that rectifies, as in causing restitution of the situation. Steps of Release The first step is to recognize that by holding on to anger, you are poisoning yourself and hoping to make the other person or persons die. You can't release anger directly. Release occurs when you perceive both the situation and your own responses comprehensively. Release is the product of direct self-perception of the whole sense of quandary in which you find yourself. Release is not the product of an intellectual, moral, rationalizing process or mental reasoning. It's not the result of ethical injunctions, psychological knowledge, or problem-solving of any kind. Instead, it's the result of the second step, recognizing the felt structure of the bind in which you find yourself. That recognition immediately prompts a spontaneous release and relief. I'll explain the second step briefly, and that's the last thing I'll say before I put before you a process that actually accomplishes that recognition and release. Every experience consists of four component aspects. Attention, memory, intention, imagination. Attention makes things distinct. Memory reminds you of relationships, things affecting each other. Intention is always toward a difference or a different situation. And imagination is a kind of openness to the unknown so that new intelligence can emerge. I think you can tell immediately that each of these four is a rabbit hole with great depth. They add up to your feeling of any experience being substantial, or having a certain persistence, solidity, and effect upon you that makes you feel like you have to get involved with something you don't quite understand or perhaps can't affect. Fortunately, you don't have to make mental sense of these component aspects to have this work. In fact, you have to let go of mental analysis or mere mental understanding to secure a direct perception of the feelings beneath the words. This is not something many people are equipped to do. People have been educated to do the opposite, to think, to analyze or just to act on their impulses based upon what they think they know. That all works about as well as the news portrays. 
The contamination by that virus continues unabated and worse than uncontrolled, abetted by its carriers. That means spread by everyone carrying that virus of anger and stupidity. So this is the missing part. Here's where I put before you a self-reconditioning procedure that makes it all plain. Once you have this procedure, you can apply it to anything that makes you angry. Waste no time hesitating. Spend the time doing this procedure until you start getting intuitive insight into your part in this divide-and-conquer scheme. Wouldn't you like to win over the stupids? To get yourself out from under their thumbs and instead of experiencing being pitted against yourself, experience the recovery of your faculties of intelligence at a higher level? I knew you would. Here's the four diamonds. Note that this video segment is a preparatory quick preview of the full-length procedure, which has a link to it in the upper right-hand corner of this preparatory quick preview. There's no money involved, but you must invest yourself in the process.